Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and we are carrying on the theme of the Property Pros Spotlight, bringing into the spotlight some of these property professionals that are out there in the trenches doing the deals, getting things done, getting business on, even through these weird pandemic times, uh, and just getting to understand, you know, because everyone's got a different angle, different area, different perspective, different location, different experiences, and it's great just to tap into that and see someone else's, you know, viewpoint and see what they're up to. And who is that gentleman that we're bringing into the spotlight today? It is Ryan Waddle. Hello, Ryan. How are we, sir? Hi, good, Richard. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me on. Yes, this is great. It would have been much better if we could have sat down face to face in the office, but you know, needs must. Maybe we can do that at some point in the future. Uh, but uh, I mean, how you how you find things in general? This weird lockdown, this pandemic that's going on. How are it, things? Yeah, it's slowly going back to some sort of normality. Obviously, I think the first probably four to eight weeks it was sort of down to times. You were do, doing some stuff, doing what you can, but even getting a hold of somebody on the phone, email anything uh, so I actually got gives you a wee bit of time at the start to sort of reflect on uh, our goals and where we've been where we're sort of yeah. going how we can improve on things whether it be sort of system schedules things that when you're caught up in the, the daily the daily struggle if you like that you, you just don't get time to sit and breathe yeah. and say right let's reflect on a few things so aye aye uh, aye it's been difficult but I would say the last sort of three, four weeks it's really started to, to pick back up again. Obviously oh. the the estate agents are starting back during the twenty ninth. Yep. Uh, we need to get the surveyors back and stuff like that. So slowly, 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 but uh, getting there. So I excited. Yeah, I like that. And I love the fact you've, you've made the opportunity as well. You're taking what you can do. You're taking control, analysing things, stepping outside the business. That's brilliant. Perfect way to be. So we've got loads to chat about. We want to understand what you're up to these days, what your focus is, how you're getting on with things, etc. What your own opinions are on, you know, the market, the future, the things you touched upon there, goals and tangents and what have you. Uh, full disclosure, uh, we know each other. I know you just through Paul McFadden's uh, property project programmes, his Platinum Circle and so on and so forth. But for folks who don't, and before we start to get to grips on things and start to have a great chat, who was Ryan before this? You know, before property. What what's the deal? What how would you summarise the the kind of path that you've taken uh, up to this point? Uh, aye, well, if I start from the start, career wise, uh, I left left school and I was actually full time in football, uh, which some people may not know. Where you go? No, I didn't know that one. That was about uh, three stone ago, I think. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I, I was full-time with Dundee United, so yes. moved up to Dundee full-time for three years and never quite worked to it. A new manager came in, uh, released us, basically. Right. Uh, since after that, I got some, some offers for like, sort of smaller teams. Uh, and rightly or wrongly, I just fell out with the game at that point. I was like, i seen my mates, they, they've got good jobs and stuff like that, and I'm going, oh, geez, I'm, I'm now 20, 21 year old, and... I picked to get a job, rightly or wrongly. Uh, I don't know. That's what I've done. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes reflect back and go, should I have, should I not have? But what's the point? I've done it. So, Correct. Aye. So since then, uh, I went into construction. So basically seen an ad in the newspaper that was through Balfour Beatty, which you've probably heard, the big construction company. They were offering a sort of student engineer uh, programme, scholarship, whatever you want to call it, where you'd be part-time in university and part-time on site, mm -hmm. sort of learning the management side. So that was the first four years, and after that, I became a project manager. So it was working on big commercial buildings with with various companies. So working my way up, so I was doing some pretty, pretty high-end jobs, sort of hospitals and stuff like that, wow. uh, working my way up the ladder, and was doing quite well up until... I would say about a year, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back to in between that time. Uh, I'd been involved in property. I'd done some buy to lets. I'd done some some flips and stuff. Just in the background, uh, taking over. Obviously, I'd just seen the, the opportunity there is in property. Yeah. And started a wee, wee portfolio myself. As I said, done some flips. That wasn't serious, but just always sort of ticked over mm -hmm. over the last sort of seven, eight years. 
And about a year and a half ago, obviously, I went on Paul's course, which was sort of a game changer for me. That was the point. Uh, also, in, in my construction life at that point, I was on a job that was coming to an end, mm. uh, a big job in Edinburgh. And it was, it was grinding me down at the time, if I'm being honest. I was, I was sort of out of the house for 14 hours plus a day. And uh, that was for three years. And it was a, a really hard job. I'll not mention which job it is, but if I did, you would say that. <laughs> but, uh, it was a really difficult job. And I'd done Paul's course, and I just thought to myself, I'm going to give this a go, sort of thing. Uh, I, always, I always wanted to start my own business, but it was that way. I think Paul touched on it before. I would be the kind of guy on Google going, like, how do I make cash fast? And this, this American guy telling me, for 10, for 10 quid, I can make a £1,000 a week selling, <laughs> selling something on Amazon and uh, things like that. But I just couldn't. I always loved property, but I couldn't see how... How can I make a actual business out of it uh, as quick as I can? So when I went in Paul's course, I thought it was great. Uh, that's not me just bigging yourselves up. You've not told me to say that, but I thought it was great. And uh, yes, it really sort of flicked my mindset. Uh, in the background as well, I had a daughter as well. And I don't know, we'll call it like a, I say it's like a midlife crisis I had, but it just <laughs> went right. What do I actually want in the future? And if I just keep doing the same thing I'm doing, I'm not going to get a chance to to sort of get what I want in the future. Yeah. But that's not to say I might fail, but at least if I'm 70 year old lying in my deathbed, I'll go, right, I've, I've gave it a chance. Mm. Uh, I would hate to think that in the future I say I had the chance and I just never took it. Yeah, I love uh, that. And that's where, that's where I'm at now. So mm-hmm. I, after Paul's course, after about I would say the first six months was kind of slow. I was finishing off that job. I was just doing what I can. And then the job sort of gave me a finish. And I just decided to go for it. That was it. Fine. And that was about 10 months ago now. I've been hey. I've been full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just flying. It's brilliant because I've seen, obviously, wee snapshots of all sorts of deals and furnished properties and everything that we'll no doubt jump into and get your mindset on that one. There you go, a tan of dice boy at the start there. I never knew that about you. That's fantastic. There you go, people's backgrounds. I love it. Absolutely love it. I, I uh, definitely and, didn't make me rich, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> we just all that fame and celebrity, all the girls flocking to you. I can understand. You don't want to go into it. No, it didn't show you, <laughs> didn't show you cleaners, cleaners players bits and <laughs> the glamorous know, actually, lifestyle my first year so it was like YTS you actually at home games had to clean so there was about 10 years you right. had to clean every every seat in the stadium there was what? Go, every seat, seriously uh, 13,000 seats or something wow and uh, it was it was Jim McLean at the time oh. and if, <laughs> if he came out and he seen that one seat was dirty yeah you're doing them all again oh my god yeah uh, so I yeah. wasn't it wasn't the glam, I wasn't at the stage of the glam. <laughs> it wasn't the glam. You were more of a cleaner than a than a football player. More of a cleaner than a you know Messi. Uh, <laughs> more cleaning up mess than being a Messi. Oh, brilliant. Superb. And I can tell everything you said there when you when you dipped into the, the project management side of things and the hours and the working and stuff. Oh my god, I felt that there because you took me back, you took me back to my days. Uh, that wasn't in the construction side, that was more in the IT side. But the whole the project management, the prints too, all these certifications and flying up and down and going to London for weeks at a time. It was like, oh my yeah. God. And then you also you triggered another memory of me of it was it was my second daughter, it was Cara. She was very, very young and I'm away, you know, in some London hotel and I'm thinking, wait a minute, is it is this what I want? You know, is this are we are we going to be keeping this going? Uh, that was my light, light bulb moment, you know, so I can totally relate to everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then want to give something a go, give something a chance, you know, try and dig into it a bit more. Although you certainly, did, you seem to have a, a good start uh, on me from your construction background. I mean, that, do you feel that did help you in some way? Did it hinder you in other ways? I don't know. It definitely helps in, in terms of the, the, the sort of refurb side. Mm. It, it definitely helps. It, it does, uh, although it's different, it's domestic and it's commercial. Mm. Uh, aye, it definitely helps on that side. Mm-hmm. Every other side, there are some transferable skills in project management, but yeah, uh, 
I wouldn't say in terms of sourcing and stuff, which we'll go into, I mm-hmm. wouldn't say there's many transferable right. skills, as you know, a lot of it's market and stuff, that's all new to me, never yeah. touched it before, stuff like that, so mm-hmm. we'll probably get into that further down, but yeah. I definitely from, obviously, the, the builders work side, I, it does help, it does yeah. help. But for people listening in, you know, someone who's like, oh, I've, I've not got that background, or, you know, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a landscape gardener, or I'm, you know, working in a, an admin office or whatever, you, you don't think you, that I should put them off from, you know, looking at property, looking at the, your own, their own business? No, 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 definitely not. Mm-hmm. As I say, I mean, I would take, obviously, the construction side of it has been the building side of it. Yeah. If, if you're in any, anything else and you've got, again, it's back to who you know and making contacts. If you've got a builder, uh, they can help you out. Mm-hmm. And I, I think on the construction side, a lot of people, and I do I help some of the young people for protege and stuff, they get mm-hmm. too worried about the refurb. But it's like, uh, yeah. and they'll spend days and days. And I've got to the stage where, I, I probably I do it off pictures. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. like kind of, and it, and it, even at that, I was I started off when I started pricing them. I would go and look at what a meter of skirting is and B and Q. Right. Phone my joiner mate. Right. How much is it if I a three by three room? How much is a door? How much is it if <laughs> a door? How much is a kitchen? And see, once you've done that a few times, you, yeah. you can just do do it again and again. And I always think I go I go back to the construction side. See if you've got a refurb, and it was the same way we ran the construction side. So our our estimators would underestimate, obviously, <laughs> our project. <laughs> and you were given a budget, and you had to make money. That was it. Right. So see, uh, sorry, you didn't get to blame the estimators. Oh, you've underestimated. They didn't care. Yeah. No. So it's it's now your job, Piers. You've got to make money at that that budget. And I see the refurbs sort of the same as that. Right. Let's see if I mess up, we have £1,000 or £2,000. It's not good, but mm-hmm. you just need to find a way to claw it back somehow. Gotcha. No, that's a good way of and looking at it. that might be that you need to go out with 10 suppliers instead of your two or three that you, you need to contact 15 builders to get yeah. the price you want. Mm-hmm. I like it. Now, you mentioned how you were in the job, but you were starting to do stuff for yourself on the side. You mentioned buy to lets you mentioned some refurbs and stuff. Do you remember the very first one? Do you remember the very first thing you went for? Was it on the buy to let side? Was it the refurb side? No, well, the, f- the first few that I got was actual sort of stuff that I lived in. Right, uh, right. So they were just, I lived in them and moved, basically. Ah, uh, right, okay. And I, some, aye, aye. So that, that was the first few. The, the, first, the, the next ones after that, I was, a couple of really bad bad choices to be honest <laughs> and I was very much and it amazed me how my job is very much my job at the time was very much based on figures know your, know your numbers and stuff like that mm-hmm. I was just uneducated I was just going at something and going I was even looking at end values and stuff I was going like that that's that's run down is that how much you want for it yeah Right. And that was it. And I'm just going, fingers crossed. And I look back and I go, what was I thinking? What was I actually? <laughs> and I don't understand, but that was my main concept. I think I was watching too much like Homes Under the Hammer and stuff and going, well, you I must make money in this. I just need to just do it up. You, it's easy. Very simple. <laughs> um, so I some some really bad, bad choices. Right. Uh, definitely some bad choices. Some good ones too, but mm-hmm. uh, definitely until I... Obviously, went in the course. It got me focusing very much mm-hmm. on these are the sort of numbers and, and stuff like that that I should have done years ago. Yeah, but I didn't. yeah. So I suppose it's Paul saying that you don't know what you don't know. So well, exactly. Aye, totally. But it's great for other people to to be listening to you just now, and they can learn from that. You know, that that's the great thing about these you know podcasts, interviews, and stuff. People can actually hear someone who like yourself. They're successful. They're in the game. And they're like, all oh, right. So they did that. Okay, I might do that, or I might not do that. I might copy that. I might avoid that. I might look out for that. It's it's a brilliant thing that you're you're sharing with other people. So is that then? Is that the thing you wish you could, if you went and, you know, you were able to pick up a phone and speak to Ryan back then, would it be, or focus on the numbers, do your due diligence, or would it be something else? What's the kind of main lessons you would want to help? I, th- your, I your think, Richard, to be honest, it would have been get educated right. at a young age. Okay. Uh, I think I'm, I'm now 36. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as, as a bit older, I'd like see if I'd have done this when I was 21. Uh, you're sitting with no commitments, you've not got a house, you've not got a family. Yeah. That's my only regret. That, gotcha. uh, but 
I, I didn't even know it existed. I didn't look into it and stuff like that. So yeah. that would be my only regret because okay. I would, if I look back, I would have had a 15 year run right by now. Yeah. I would, I would be a multi billionaire. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but I would be a lot better off than I'm now. Yeah. I uh, we always wish we could press that rewind button, don't we? <laughs> Hindsight, 2020 vision. Oh dear. But that's cool, right? So where are we now then? What what are we focusing on? What's your main things that you're focusing on? Are you trying to juggle a few different things? What is the business for you at the moment? Because obviously there's loads of things that people can do in property. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the business for us, uh, sort of doing our own stuff, we're not building our portfolio at the moment. So it's, it's something we are looking in to start very shortly but uh, it's predominantly assisted sales and flips in terms of the project side but before I would say before lockdown which was about January February we really started to go at the sourcing side because uh, I think it's a realisation and you probably know yourself if you're relying on the sort of flips and stuff it's all peaks and troughs and 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 predicting your cash flow is so difficult so uh, we were sourcing before it, but not as taking it as serious, I think, as, as yeah. we should have been. Uh, and I think it's that whole, maybe for the first six months, we didn't get as many deals as you think for your spend. Right. But it, we find it's very much, it was a learning curve, and we're beginning to see the fruits of that. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people on the sourcing side, they'll, they'll spend, maybe they'll do around their leaflets. And then go, oh, we get nothing for that. That's us. We're stopping. Doesn't it work? Yeah. Uh, and it's very much, you're all speculating with spending. And it's all learning. It's all learning in terms of speaking to people as well, speaking to sellers and, and how you negotiate that. Mm-hmm. Which I look back and I was going, I look back at some of the stuff that I've let go. And I'm like, why did I let go? Uh, like stuff that I've let go for right. like. 500 quid because they'll know it's at 500 quid and I look and it's come on the market 10 grand more than I thought it was going to be and I'm like oh but <laughs> everything's a learning curve and I think if you just stick with it it's, mm-hmm. that's the hardest but uh, it's a, your first year in business so I think there's so many percent of businesses go out so that's our first year work exactly. and, and it's just sticking with it and it's learning as I said it's all new for me apart mm-hmm. from the, the builders what side that's all on new skills. New uh, strategies, new skill people. sets. Aye. Yeah, got aye. you. So I very much in terms of projects, flips and assisted sales, uh, doing some buy lets for uh, investors and stuff, but mm-hmm. not for our own stuff. Right. And very much concentrating on sourcing at the moment. Right. Which has gone, which has gone, it was going really well before lockdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kind of the first the first half of lockdown, it kind of died, but right. now it's really starting to pick up again. Ah, so you are seeing that then? You're kind of yeah, seeing things yeah, on the ground. Definitely, uh-huh. mm-hmm. definitely. And you can see that continuing. Then you kind of seeing the exit point almost. Aye, aye. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, aye, this also inside, there's a lot of people sort of worried about what's going to happen in the future. Uh, in terms of the market, I think the market will spike now for the last the next sort of three months because to me it's competition you've got drives the prices so you've got three months of people chatting at the back to buy houses yeah. uh, so for the next sort of three three months and maybe just beyond I think I think they'll spike I think I've seen something in England that prices actually went up mm. uh, haven't up since since lockdown went back so aye but yeah we are getting a lot of direct to vendor stuff with people just going it's all right putting your house to market now, but that might not sell for six months or a year. And by that time, maybe prices would have dipped. So you're, yeah. get, you're getting a bit, of, uh, a bit of success with that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. What's the parts of the business that excite you the most? You get the most fun in, you get the most satisfaction in? I think the refurbs, obviously. Is it? Yeah. Aye, what aye, what aye, is it about them? Is it getting in amongst them? Is it seeing the before and after? What, what just, part of aye, it? The whole before and after bit. Uh, the in-between bit's not so enjoyable, as you probably <laughs> know sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you'll know yourself, refurbs are not, are not easy. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's always something that comes up that you've no budgeted for or a problem mm. or a whole list of things. But uh, definitely the before and after thing. But as I say, the more I get into sourcing, 
I really like that side of things now. Right. I right. really enjoy it. Uh, and for the beginners listening in, for someone you just in, in a job just now, they've not even done anything at all. When we say sourcing, how would you explain that to them? This is finding these opportunities, isn't it? Yeah. So that's that's yeah. basically market marketing. You've probably seen all these. I feel like there's one in every lamppost in Glasgow, but uh, we buy houses sort of uh, thing. So it's basically gone direct to vendor. Uh, so you're looking for people who who can't or don't want to sell it through traditional estate agents. Uh, you're direct to vendor with them. So that will be market in terms of whatever you want. That could be flyers, bandit boards, Google ads, Facebook ads, things like that. Mm-hmm. And negotiating a price. Mm-hmm. And on the other end, obviously, we do our own stuff. So our sort of outlet is we take it if, mm-hmm. if the deal's good enough and it fits our criteria. If it doesn't, then it can it might fit another investor's criteria mm-hmm. uh, that you've got on board. Yeah. And you just sit in between in that instance and, and make some money. Yeah, and help help both people, help someone yeah. sell that wants to and help someone invest that wants to. Yeah. And for, yeah. for someone who's listening in just now, you know, obviously they can they can dip, dip into the show notes, they can see all the links off to your websites and your, your contacts and stuff. If someone's looking to invest and they want to you know take advantage of your services, is that something you, you've got at the moment? Are they able to get in touch with you just in case? I get in touch, yeah. get in touch. Uh, aye, we'll probably get space for maybe another couple at the moment. Right. Uh, because I find I don't want to, I know there's all this raise, raise loads and loads and loads of money and have loads and loads of clients, but you find that there's a happy medium, I think. And mm-hmm. that's what I found out in the first year, to keep everybody happy and, mm-hmm. and provide a good service. Uh, I don't, we know how many deals we can sort of source now with average. Mm-hmm. So, aye, aye, I've, I've got space for another couple. So I feel free to get in touch, anybody that, yeah, that wants to have a chat. Excellent. You heard the man. Whenever it's safe to do so, just go to that wee show notes page and reach out. Obviously, just connect with Ryan, you know, follow him, see what he's doing. And uh, in fact, talking to that, Ryan, one of the things that I just love from following you is at the end of each project, you always put together some cracked pictures or more importantly, a nice video showing the finished project. You, you've most often got it staged, you know, it's all set up with furniture and so on. And it just looks fantastic just to watch it even. You know, is that something you consciously put together? Had you all Always done that? Was it a change of strategy? No, I hadn't always done it, but I will do uh, going forward. It's just mm-hmm. to give that that sort of extra edge, especially on things like flips. Mm-hmm. I didn't know staging existed till about a year ago. Right. Uh, I know. I know it's kind of big in America and stuff, and they've been doing that for years. Uh, so, I, for anybody that don't know, it's just basically renting furniture, and and the company that comes in and they install it or they put it all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, your wee, wee fancy flowers and like maybe a wee bottle of champagne in the, the kitchen and stuff, as mm-hmm. you've seen. But aye, it's just to get the edge. When, when you're scrolling through right move, you want yours to be the one that stands out. Yes, uh, exactly. And especially, I mean, I mean, I think I paid £100 for the video as well, and it's got the music playing in the background and all. The, I mean, for 100 quid, it's and, and people in right move can play the video, and, mm-hmm. and that's it, they're drawn into it. They're drawn yeah. into it. That's it. Uh, they actually picture themselves living there, uh, can't they? It's a real uh, selling point. And I always say, uh, I wrote a post about this last month. I see, I see if you can, see if you can sell it to the women, then you, you're you're halfway there. <laughs> uh, That's so yeah. true. And I always think of this right or wrongly, but I think if if it's a, a family going in, the women's going to pick whether they're going to buy it or not. Yeah. If you've got, if you're making it look pretty, this this is not sexist, by the way. This is not sexist. No, no. If you make it look pretty, then aye, you, you're in with a shout. Yeah, you've kind of closed one of those doors already. And <laughs> from a business perspective, standing back for that and looking at things, because you spoke about it, you're analysing that, okay, there's a cost here, there's a bit of time involved, I'm renting this furniture, I'm paying for this video, so on and so forth. Do you think you'll carry forward with the same way? Or do you see yourself, some of these people have actually got to the point where they're stockpiling their own furniture, you know, some kind of cabin somewhere, and then they're doing it themselves. How do you see your business evolving that way? No, I, would, I think I would just keep renting it, to be honest. Yeah, just keep aye, outsourcing just, that part of it? Aye, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's just another thing, I think, mm-hmm. that I've not got time to do, so yeah. stockpiling and moving it. And so, aye, for the cost, it's not a great cost. Mm-hmm. So... And I, I see it as free, if you think about it. Uh, it can push your price up at the end. Yeah. So it's, it's basically just speculating to accumulate. 
Yeah. I like it. It's definitely an eye-catching thing. It really sticks. Every time I've seen updates from yourself, it's like you stop. You stop and what, I need to watch this. I need to press that play button. So, oh. you know, magnify that by 100 if it's someone who's desperate for finding their next home or they're trying to move up to another bedroom or whatever, you know. So very, very powerful marketing. Brilliant stuff. Now, you spoke about the fact that the, the focus with the, the refurbs at the moment, you've got an idea of portfolios at some point in the future, etc. Where in general do you see the business going? Have you got plans? you got goals or milestones or targets? Yes. Yeah, definitely. We've got, aye, we've got, we've picked up a few more flips. So we've got, a, we've got, a, we've set it out as sort of a target for uh, flips and income via sourcing this right. year. That's the that's the way we we set our sort of target uh, at the moment. We're probably in terms of the portfolio stuff. We're looking to get starting next year. Mm-hmm. So at the start of next year, as I say, I think the market, right or wrong, I think the market's going to be buoyant for the next three to six months. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why flips will become, as you know yourself, flips will become harder harder to sell. But there is going to be opportunity to buy them at better prices so we are going to keep flipping but we'll be very picky about sort of areas and and price right basically uh i mean right now and and before the crash you know yourself you could you could basically flip anywhere within like a five mile radius of glasgow and it'll go yeah. because because of the market the way it was i think in the next three to six months everybody's Everybody's got the government money. I think everybody will be okay. Mm. I think the government money is almost like putting a plaster over a wound mm. at the moment. Uh, so you probably know there's going to be something coming. So the way I see it is, aye, flip, flips and stuff at the moment, and we will continue, but we'll be very picky. Mm. But there will definitely be deals to be done in the buy let's side as well. Mm. Uh, and that, that'll be just using the refurb refinance model. Right, gotcha. Excellent stuff. Okay. Now, let's say, let's get things open. Let's say, share the good and the bad, the good, bad and the ugly with the folks listening in. Looking back, what would jump out to you as, or oh, that, see that moment, I loved that, or that property, or that achievement, you know, I got a lot of satisfaction for that. That was brilliant. That was a, a win, an achievement, a feel-good factor, whatever. And then what would you have to pick up as, oh, see that moment, oh my God, it was so challenging. It was such a surprise or a setback or something I had to work around. What, what's the kind of good and bad you would share with people? I think, I think obviously, the, the good... I mean, I, I had a flat, probably the best bit of had in property, as I had a flat, I've told this story before, but I had a flat in, in London, that the capital growth went through the roof, I went up, I don't know, 100 grand or something in two and a half years, something stupid like that. Oh right? my so goodness. In terms of just monetary side, you know, I say that's all good, I had two tenants that didn't pay me for 15 months in the same flat and wrecked the place, oh. still drinks and stuff like that, so... That's a good and a bad story. I was going to say it's more good at the end. Of it. <laughs> I, I, in terms of the bad, I would, I would probably say over over lockdown I had three. So as you know yourself, we tie investors up and stuff like that and work with them to builders. So I had three drop out over the over the COVID period for their own reasons. They're just getting fearful, and and sort of I can see that I can't really argue with that. It's everybody's. Situation's different, but I also had a flip fell through twice within sort of three months over that same period. The sale mm-hmm. fell through twice. So it has moments like that where you're just sitting going, oh, everything's wrong. Do you know what I mean? You're staring at your computer go, where did I go for here? But uh, you just need to push through it. I yeah. think that you get your... There's, as you know, with property, there's just days where you feel like you're on top of the world and everything's gone right. Mm-hmm. And then just one wee thing will happen. Somebody yeah. will pull out a deal or investor will pull out and you try to keep an you try to keep a seller sweet and you're like, Oh, I just don't want to do this anymore. I hate that. I'm going back to build hospitals. Back to my job, but <laughs> oh, that was dead easy. But uh, no, no, I'm enjoying it. I don't want to go back to my job, by the way. No. I don't if no, I do that, I'm, honestly I think I'm taking knitting needles from my eyes that if that day ever comes about. Uh, <laughs> Aye, aye. So I also also started another business in the background just now as well. 
Ah, uh, right. Uh, that's going to do sort of Gary's conversions and stuff. So, but I just sort of do the marketing. So, I, I look at it, look at that. Just this business, the more I see it as, I know a lot of people talk about the sort of multiple streams of income side mm. there. And, and it is, it's, once you start to open your eyes and you get into the business world, it's, it's just me. And there's a couple of other opportunities I'm looking at as well. So, right, really? It's, aye, it's yeah. building the empire, hopefully. That's fantastic. That's, that's brilliant here. That'll be interesting watching those different journeys as well then. What brought about the kind of the, the garage perspective? Was that a conversation? Was it a wee idea one day? It was a conversation with, with a builder, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously his strength is building. So yep. and he was like, oh, that would be great. And this this will be based on you know, all these new builds are getting thrown up and they're all predominantly four beds with internal garage. And right. there's nothing there's nothing to them. And he, he was going to do it himself anyway. And I says, well, why don't, he's no good at the marketing side. I would say, I've actually learned a lot about marketing and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously dealing with customers and so I basically like sourcing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just sourcing the opportunity. Uh, aye, and it just, I just went, I can cover that, no problem. That's uh, fantastic. Which my missus will actually be dealing with, no, me predominantly. Right, really? Uh, a real family business here? This is I tremendous. So my missus is going to come with it. She, she quit her job about five months ago as well. Right. Uh, right, she'll be working with me now. So right. it's just, it just feels like it's just becoming a bit much at times. So. Sure. So, uh, she was only working part-time anyway because we've got the kid and nursery mm-hmm. hours and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, she'll be coming on board, albeit. The, the kid's been off nursery for the last sort of three months, so uh, it's been predominantly me, but she goes to school in a couple of months, so. Yeah, that's fantastic, God, it's all going on, this is tremendous, absolutely brilliant, you can see why this man is flying, he's just got his eyes on for opportunities and just combining contacts and skills and all sorts of things, absolutely brilliant stuff. Now, I want to be respectful of your time, but let me, can I, the, the final thing I would want to ask you, this this thing you've got, you, you've just touched upon it there, that you know, seeing the opportunity, seeing someone else, seeing how you can uh, collaborate, bring things together. You've got the family working together, all sorts of things. The desire you spoke about at the start, about your own business, your own thing, has that always been there? Did it come because of a frustration in employment? Is it something that's just inside you? Where do you see that coming from? Uh, To be fair, I think I've always had it. Uh, I've always, even when I was younger, I mean, my, my, I would do wee things with my dad and stuff, and what about this idea and that idea? As I say, I was one of these guys that were always looking for something and just just quite, just never quite, and when you know yourself, when you get into the, the sort of comfort of a full-time job and that, that salary hits your account, that just becomes like a distant, that's in the background. Uh, but I think it's always been there. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've said that mm-hmm. through the years, but I've just never took the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, and it definitely was the course. It was the course that, that was the turning point for me. Mixed in with the, the midlife crisis with the kid and the... <laughs> uh, I just just actually reflecting, what do I want? And as I say, my only regret is I didn't, I didn't have that thought process in my early 20s. Earlier, That's my yeah. only regret. Uh, mm-hmm. And it very much is. It's, it's, so it's a mixture between, yes, I've always wanted to do it, and sort of my daughter coming along, and it just felt right with my job. I just wasn't there. Right. It was a hard, a hard graft, and just everything. It was a combination. It just felt, this is the moment. I've done the course, and this is it. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, perfect storm of all different things. It was. Yeah. It was. It, it just felt right. It mm. just felt right. So. A gut thing, an instinct I, thing. <laughs> Fantastic. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. There you go, ladies and gents. Ryan Waddle. I knew I'd love that, but just quite know as much as I thought. And I love getting the Tanadice surprise as well. That was brilliant. Another wee bit of the background story, which is always tremendous. And it was great. You've, you've felt so many people, just great experiences, opinions, ideas, the, the way that you view things and work on things. Absolutely tremendous. Really, really appreciate your time today. Thanks a million, Ryan. No, thanks for that. That was great. Thank you. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of the links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.